What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, an introduction to Newton's third law of motion, sometimes referred to as the action-reaction force pairs. Seems simple in nature, but oh, out of all of Newton's laws, this is the one I see most misrepresented by words and also a little bit confusing for students to explain. So if you're on the AP level or if you're on the SAT physics level, you are going to need to explain what are action-reaction force pairs and what are not. I made a video about some of the common misconceptions that I'll link in the end of this video and in the description so you can check out some of those problems that students have when explaining this. But I want to go through it and show you that it's really an equation misrepresented by words. I want to show you how it's misrepresented and show you how we could fix it so that we are perfectly clear. First, let's show the equation for Newton's third law of motion. Now, every force is an interaction between two objects. In this case, I'm going to call them objects one and objects two. So first and foremost, for an action-reaction pair, there must be two objects and two forces. So when you're trying to identify an action-reaction force pair, you must make sure there are two objects and two forces. And this is one of those misconceptions for a book on a table you get asked if the force of gravity is an action-reaction force pair with the normal force. Well, that's two forces acting on one object, so that is not a force pair. And like I said, check out that video. I go really in depth. But please make sure that there are two objects and two forces acting. So what this says is if I apply force one onto force two, then force two will be applied to force one equal and opposite two that first initial force. Now, how is this misrepresented by words? Let me draw out what most people say. Now, if you've heard anything about this, pause the video and think to yourself, how would you put this in words or how have you heard it before in the past? So how does this sound? For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That is the thing that I get told most often by people when they tell me about Newton's third law. So, the next thing we need to understand, besides there's two objects and two forces, is that Newton's third law, it relates to forces, not actions. Let me give you an example of what I mean. I have two kids. Avery's about two and a half. Brody's about a year old. If Brody comes and snatches Avery's water glass out of her hand, Avery loses her mind. She screams and flips out, and it happens every single time. So the action of Brody taking away the cup from Avery then has a reaction of Avery losing her mind. Well, that's an action opposite reaction. But does that have to do with Newton's third law? No, because it has nothing to do with physics. Okay. It's not every action. There is an equal and opposite reaction. It's for every action force. There is an equal and opposite reaction force. For example, when you're on a dock and you jump off the dock into the pool or into the lake or whatever, you apply a force to the dock and this is going to be the action force. Now the reaction is going to be that the second object, so here's object one and object two, the second object therefore puts a equal and opposite force on you. This is the reaction force. And it's worth noting that these forces do not cancel out. So in that misconception video, I also talk about like, if there's an equal and opposite reaction, shouldn't we not be able to move? Like if I push on the air and the air pushes on me the same, shouldn't they cancel out? Guys, the cancellation of forces happens on one object. You can cancel force on one object. These are action reaction pairs. Also, back to Newton's second law of F equals MA. If I, push, if I push with 10 newtons on the dock, well, the dock's mass is enormous. It's not going to accelerate. But if the dock pushes on me with 10 newtons of force, my mass is much less. So I will accelerate, which is why I can move. And the other thing that I don't like about the wording and when you use the words is when I say every action force has an equal and opposite reaction force, it applies that first there is a force and then there is a reaction. You need to remember that this action-reaction force pair in Newton's third law, these two forces happen simultaneously. The instant I push on the dock is the instant it pushes back on me. 
I don't push on the doc and then the doc says a couple seconds later or a couple milliseconds later, oh wait, I just got pushed on. I need to push back. No. As soon as I do it, it applies a force right back to me and these will be equal and opposite regardless of the amount of force potential that that object has. If I run into a wall and I hit that wall with 50 newtons of force, well, that wall can apply a lot more force than 50 newtons. It only applies the amount of force that it needs to to be equal to the force that gets hit with it, regardless of the mass. If I push a little boy, he pushes on me at the exact same force back, but because he has less mass, he will probably accelerate faster and fall down. I'm not a bully. I just wanted to use that as an example. I don't push kids. I'll put that misconception video right here. And down here will be a playlist of all Newton's laws with other problems and examples if you want to check them out. And please click right here if you want to subscribe for more content. Give the video a like. Until I see you guys in the next one, stay positive. Work really, really hard. Always, please be kind to other people. I'll see you on the next one.